Hello and welcome to part four of this nice vibrations tutorial. Uh, this part will focus on triggering transient and continuous haptic patterns. So if you look at nice vibrations documentation, uh, you can learn more about this concept. So basically what you need to know is that there are two main ways of triggering haptics. One is to use what is called a transient haptic pattern. So it's a short burst. It's it's like just one instance of uh, haptic vibration. And the other one is to use a continuous haptic pattern. So that would be something like or something like that. Um, both patterns are defined by their intensity and their sharpness. And that is something that is true across uh, most devices, it's uh, something that was coined by Apple initially, but you'll find something relatively similar when you're working with gamepads. And uh, while Android doesn't have sharpness, it does have intensity. So uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I'll be focusing on iOS, which has the most uh, range and the most finesse when it comes to defining these um, values. And so the intensity of a haptic is just like, let's say if we compare that to a sound, it would be the volume of a sound. So a high intensity haptic will be like a loud sound and uh, it will be very clear to feel it. And a low intensity one will be, uh, well, quieter and more like uh, uh, something hushed really. And then we have the sharpness and the sharpness would be akin to the frequency of a sound. So a very low sharpness will feel like a bass sound and a high sharpness haptic will feel like a high pitched, something much more sharp. Uh, well, obviously more sharp, but um, it will feel more rigid. And if we were to draw the shapes of these haptics, uh, this is what we would get for a one uh, so maximum intensity haptic, but with a very low sharpness and uh, something more precise if we had a maximum sharpness. So uh, let's have a look at how we can trigger these haptics. And to test that, I'm going to turn my gamepad on and it should appear here at some point. Yes, cool. And um, I'm going to create, I'm going to create a new button and this one I'm going to rename to uh, test transient. And I'm going to uh, keep modifying test nice vibes that we had uh, the other time. I can close the other ones. And I'm going to create a new public method. And I'm called I'm going to call it test transient and to um, to call that method. It's very simple, uh, pretty much like every method in nice vibrations. And this is done like this. So uh, you specify an intensity and a sharpness. And of course you could do that by uh, going one F one F, uh, but, or, you know, 0.5 F and so on. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new section here in my, uh, test class uh, and I'm actually gonna just because it's prettier that way um, I'm, we're gonna call that haptic base patterns or something and so in transient I'm gonna expose a float uh, which is gonna be my transient intensity actually just intensity and uh, that way we can reuse it later on and sharpness and I'm gonna say this is one by default and this is one by default and so now I can reuse these uh, intensity and sharpness parameters in my call here sharpness and I want to also rumble and I want to use this as my coroutine support. So now if I go back to Unity and again, uh, just like last time, I'm going to I'm going to hold my uh, gamepad next to the mic. Hopefully you'll you'll be able to hear something. 
If I press play, every time I press the button, I get a test vibration because I didn't bind the button to the right method. Silly me. So uh, test nice vibes, test transient this time. And I'm actually gonna add the same kind of debug log just in case uh, vibrations can be heard. So I'm gonna press play again. Okay, this time I get uh, the transient. And if I, actually I, I can make it better. It's just gonna take a second. Um, I'm gonna make this range attribute. So uh, intensity and sharpness only go from zero to one, they're normalized. So if I go back to Unity, you can see that I now have nice sliders here. So this is a transient haptic with maximum intensity and sharpness. If I lower the intensity, it becomes much harder to hear. And if I lower the sharpness, and if I make it zero, well, now there's nothing to hear anymore. And so by, by playing with these two sliders, I can get all sorts of different uh, feels and I can make something as impactful as a punch maybe or something that um, gradually reduces, let's say a bouncing ball. Uh, you may want the first bounce to feel really uh, hard and as it goes down and, and loses energy really, uh, you want it to lower the intensity of the feedbacks. So moving on, I'm uh, gonna make some room in my demo scene here to add buttons. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate these two and I'm gonna rename, well at least change the text on them. Uh, so I'm gonna say start continuous on this one and I'm gonna say stop continuous on this one. And now I want to create uh, the methods for that. So I'm gonna make some room here, declare a public void start continuous and a public void stop continuous. Like that. I'm gonna go back to Unity and I'm gonna select my it's getting it's getting messy. I'm gonna rename them. So that's the test vibe button. This one is test transient button. This one is start continuous button. Wow. And this is stop continuous button. All right, it's better. So uh, start continuous is going to be calling start continuous and this stop continuous button is going to be calling the stop continuous method. So now going back to Visual Studio, I'm going to add code to these two methods so that start continuous actually triggers the start of a continuous haptic and uh, stop continuous stops that haptic. So uh, what I want to do is MM vibration manager continuous haptic and I'm going to reuse the intensity and intensity and sharpness that are already exposed in our inspector just for demo purposes. Uh, I'm going to say I want that to vibrate for three seconds. I want the haptic type to be failure in case uh, I'm in a situation where I don't support uh, continuous, so that would be Android, for example, uh, doesn't support continuous feedbacks like that. And uh, I'm gonna set this as my mono behavior, and I also want to rumble so we can keep hearing our tests. And that's it. And um, in stop continuous, I'm just gonna call mm vibration dot stop continuous haptics like this. 
And the last thing I want to change uh, is to make sure that right here, I also uh, want my stop continuous haptic to affect the rumble. So if I go back to Unity now and uh, it imports the scripts and I press play, if I press start continuous, you can hear the rumble. If I press on the stop continuous, it stops rumbling. It's as simple as that. So um, it's important to note that start continuous, that, that duration only affects mobile phones. So that would be iOS and Android. Won't have an impact on uh, gamepad. So on gamepads, you want to make sure at some point you call uh, stop continuous haptics. And what we're gonna do now is um, try to see how we can modify our haptics at runtime. So to do that, I'm gonna add a private value, uh, a private boolean called uh, continuous in progress or something like that. And what I'm gonna say is here, uh, continuous in progress becomes true and here it becomes false. And so one of the ways uh, we can modify our haptics at runtime is the, by doing that at update. So uh, I'm gonna be like private void update. And here I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say if continuous is not in progress, then we want to return. Otherwise, we want to tell our vibration manager to update continuous haptics with the intensity that we have in our inspector and that sharpness we have in the inspector. Uh, and we want to also affect the rumble. And that's the last, the last parameter. So now, if I go back to Unity and again, hold my gamepad, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on start continuous and then I'm gonna start playing with these sliders and you'll see what happens. And of course, if I press stop, it stops. Um, this I just did using input and very crude input by just moving sliders in an inspector. But that means that you can have a coroutine do that. You can uh, feed this method just varying values. Uh, you could use uh, an animation curve to drive these values. So really the possibilities are endless. You could uh, bind these to, I don't know, the speed of a character or the, the level of uh, a car's engine or stuff like that. So um, yeah, this is how you trigger transient and continuous haptics in nice vibrations. Uh, it's made as simple as possible, really. All of these are one-liners. Um, I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.